Hello everybody, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. It is Monday, April 10th, and thank you for joining me this week. I'm happy to have you here and appreciate that you're taking time out of your schedule to watch this video tutorial, whether on replay or live tonight. Um, I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and have been with them for a little over 10 years, but have been making cards for many more years than that. And uh, my goal is simply to spread joy one card at a time. Uh, tonight I am going to share with you a treat holder. Um, typically I do cards, but every once in a while I throw in a 3D project just to shake things up a little bit. I actually made these for our Easter table this year and so wanted to share the box layout with you tonight as well. Um, just want to put a quick reminder out there. We are coming up to the end of the calendar catalog year and um, what that means is that there's a lot of products. Hi Kim, thanks for watching. A lot of products that are going to be going on the um, retirement list and are not going to be available. There are already many products that have started selling out, including some of the in-color products um, that are leaving us. So if there's anything that you want, please go out and check the website. Um, look for retiring items and get your orders in sooner than later because I'd hate for you to miss something out, miss out on something um, just because you didn't get your order in right away. Some things are going really fast. Other things have a great discount on it, so you may want to take advantage of that as well. So without, um, oh, one thing I do have to mention, I think when I was talking last week, I mentioned um, how we were having blizzard warnings and another eight or nine, ten inches, who knows anymore, of snow that dumped on us. Today we were in the mid to upper 60s. Our snow is nearly gone, except where we had to pile it into snow banks. And I got the last of my um, Christmas decorations pulled out of the ground today with the exception of one stake that was holding a, a decoration in place. And I think in the next couple of days I'm going to be able to get rid of that. So it's amazing how quickly things change here. Let me flip my phone over. Apologize for the, the hand and the crash of my camera stand and the ceiling. Not one of my more smooth transitions here sorry about that all right and then I just need to switch my plug I never like to do my lives without having my phone plugged in just in case because one never knows and all right looks like I'm going live in the right place too so that's always reassuring okay so Whoops, I'm kind of fumbling things here tonight. Sorry about that. Um, like I said, I need, well, I was out looking um, for a treat holder. I had picked up some of these Ghirardelli little bunnies, um, milk chocolate and caramel, and I wanted a little treat holder that I could put these in. Um, so I just did a little search on Pinterest for Ghirardelli bunny chocolate treat holders. And I came across one that was designed a couple years ago now by the Paper Pixie, Julie DiMatteo. And hers was designed to hold just one of these chocolates, um, or a couple of the little squares. And I wanted to be able to put two in my box. So I took a look at her directions and um, adjusted the measurements and things like that to make the box fit two. I've never really done that with measurements, so here's what I used on our Easter table. But I didn't quite have my measurements right, so the flaps on the ends did not cover things up correctly. And this is just a little box that I closed with a dimensional, and then I had two pieces of chocolate fit in there. I went ahead and used these because I actually pre-cut them all before I put them together and realized that that didn't work. But after Easter, I came back and... Um, Worked on the measurements, so I got the sides to work out, and then I added a piece of paper on the top here too, because I thought it just needed a little bit more. These two sentiment, or this this sentiment and the bunny came from some old paper pumpkin kits that I had, because I don't actually have right now any Easter images in my um, stamp collection. And then I decided, hey, this could be a good happy birthday, so I used some of the. Um, 
oh, I can never remember the name of it. Fancy Flora, six by six paper. And I came up with this one that just says happy birthday. And um, again, measurements are in good order with a little bow on it. I thought it might be fun to hand off to somebody on their birthday as well. And what I'm going to show you how to do tonight is make this little treat holder. It is pretty quick. Sometimes it's nice to, um, if you're gonna make a group of these, maybe pre-cut some stuff so that you can do kind of an assembly line production, um, but completely up to you how you're going to do that. So let me set some things aside here. I'm going to use, again, the, um, actually I'm not, I, on this one, I use my go-to greetings with the little happy birthday. On the one I'm going to show you how to make tonight, I am using up, or using, some of the um, He's the Man Designer Series paper. And I am actually using one of the die cut greetings that goes with that set um, of paper. And that will um, mean I don't need to do any stamping. So to start with, the measurements that you need for this card... I just had, oh, they fell to the floor again. Yikes. Okay, the measurements for this card measure four and a half by five and a half. And then you're going to score it at three quarters of an inch down each side, um, starting with the four inch end of thing, or four and a half inch, sorry, three quarters of an inch on either side. And then you are going to score at one and a half inches two and a quarter inches, three and three quarter inches, and four and a half inches. And so basically what I've done is um, made this and this three quarters of an inch just to expand it out a little bit, enough to hold two of the treats, okay? And then you're also going to need a couple pieces of designer series paper these two pieces measure two and seven eighths by one and three eighths. I want to make sure I cut those right. Yep. And then this piece measures seven eighths by a lot longer than it's supposed to. Seven eighths of an inch by two and seven eighths. I didn't think that looked right. I want to make sure I get most of those cars on there. So I'm going to flip it around. Okay, that last piece of paper there measures two and, uh, excuse me, measures seven eighths by two and seven eighths of an inch. And then the little piece that I'm using for the top measures seven eighths, or, this piece measures, all right, I gotta start over because I don't want to be confusing you here on these measurements. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head and I just should not be doing that. Okay, so this piece should measure seven eighths by two and seven eighths, which is what that does. And so that fits in right there. And then this piece is supposed to measure Um, five eighths by two and seven eighths. That's what's off on that one. Okay, and so that's just going to fit in on that little piece on the top. And I'm just going to double check this one because it still feels a little bit wide to me. Yeah, it is a teeny bit wide. Not much, but just a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. So again, I've got 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths, 5 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths, and then two pieces that measure 1 and 3 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. Okay? And then if you want to do a sentiment, um, you know, like this, depending on the size of your greeting, this is like 2 and an eighth inches and 3 eighths inch wide. But really, you just need would need to cut a scrap to fit your um, 
your sentiment, however you're using that. All right, so the next thing we need to do is do a little bit of trimming out of places that we're not going to use um, to form tabs and things like that. So on your, your paper, you've got the two larger boxes, and then you've got the um, one-inch box at the top, and that's the one that we want to work with. And so what we're going to do is trim along that score line up to this amount. And this again is on the end that has the two narrower spaces, not the one and three eighths, but the, the narrower spaces. And we need to cut out both sides here. This will form our top flap. Um, so it forms this piece and this, this piece of the flap. And then we also need to come through and cut out the tabs. So I find it easiest if I just, um, I like to angle and that way if it's not perfectly square, it doesn't matter. So I am making an angle cut right up to that score line. And doing that on either side and so then I get that tab and I'm just going to repeat that over here this doesn't have to be a very sharp angle just do what you're comfortable with um, and it doesn't matter if they're exactly the same because it's not going to show So again, I'm just trimming right up to that score line and making an angle. And then I will just angle off this edge a little bit too. Um, what that does is just, if there's any unevenness in your score lines or anything like that, it isn't going to show because these pieces will still fall down and line up like they should. Okay, and so that essentially is all the cutting that we need to do for this project. Um, the other thing I need to do is just add a little bit of tear and tape. And I just need to put a piece here. And a piece here. I just find tear and tape to work a little bit better when I'm doing 3D boxes like this. I don't have to worry about the liquid glue drying or whether or not the adhesive I'm using is going to be strong enough to hold it. And then the next step is we're just simply going to fold along the score lines and take your bone folder so you're burnishing those in. And then we'll also do the same along the side here. I made a, a group of these for our Easter dinner table and I found the snipping out of stuff to be the, the longest part and I think that's part of the reason I just wanted to kind of mass mass produce them or why I'm suggesting that um, just because I didn't enjoy that part of it. Okay um, now to assemble it, if you've got designer series paper that has a pattern to it that needs to be facing a certain direction, make sure that you lay that out on your box because I'd hate for you to assemble it and then find out that it's upside down. So just do a quick layout so that you're sure you can see which direction your designer series paper needs to go so that you don't have it going upside down and then we're just going to attach our adhesive and I'm going to double check again that's the front so this needs to go like this and you'll just center this right inside that space. All right, so I've got that one on right. And then here, 
This designer series paper will go in the opposite direction because it's going to be on the back side of the box. So we're going to put that here. And then this piece, which forms the flap, I want to make sure that it's going this direction. Um, this is honestly the first one I've made where it's been going a specific direction. <laughs> I hadn't had to really worry about that on my other boxes that I made. So just keep that in mind. Because it would look silly to put this box together and have all our cars upside down. And if you wanted to, you could take a corner rounder and round off the edges. Um you know, on, on here just to dress it up a little bit. I, again, have chosen not to do that, um, mostly because I don't have that punch at this time that would do that. All right, then to, oh, I forgot my top piece. Um, this one does not have a direction to it. Ooh, looks sticky there. So I don't have to worry about that. And I'm just going to center it in, sort of center it in this space. I didn't want it to go down yet, so I'm hoping I can get it up. There we go. So I'm just going to center it like this. And that is it for first layer of decorations. I do find it's a lot simpler to put those on before you assemble the box, just as a heads up. And then to assemble the sides, all we need to do is start by peeling off the adhesive on one side. I like to do the untaped piece, the little tag flap there, and then fold this up and that way it's holding all of those pieces in place. And I just bring that flap over right to the edge and adhere it. You can take your bone folder and just give it a good burnishing rub there. And then repeat that on this side. Um, I like to have this little flap in between the two larger flaps because then it's not hanging out on the inside getting in the way of whatever you're trying to put into your little treat box. It'll still work if you forget to do that step. I just like to finish it off a little differently than that so that it's not in my way. Okay, and then I've got this Hooray die cut, which again came from this designer series paper, and I'm just going to put it over this flap. So I only want to put adhesive on the top part. I don't want it um, closing down over the whole thing with adhesive because then the box wouldn't open. So we're just gonna center this with a big hooray. Right in the middle. And if you wanted to, I've taken a piece of this linen thread or linen ribbon and you could make kind of a little fobo with it just by tying it. Cut that end off a little bit shorter. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will attach that with the mini glue dots that I can't find right now. So I'm just going to use one of these. And my take your pick tool. They're probably staring right in front of me. I just can't see them right now. And maybe we'll put that on the top. This kind of looks like a little bow tie. Since this is a more masculine looking paper, we'll put a little bow tie right on the top here. Okay, cool, and my hooray is not very straight. That's better. All right, and then the last step, I am going to use some of the black dimensionals. I use this to close, and so that way it's not going to show up a whole lot. 
And I just put it on the top flap and once I'm ready to seal it, I'll peel off that backing and the lid will stay closed and then they can open it. You could also use magnets if you wanted the boxes to be reusable. Um, totally up to you. We'll just tuck our little bunnies in there, peel off that back flap and fold it down. And now we've got a fun little box. This will hold um, other like mini sized candy bars. It'll also hold a couple of the small mini Ghirardelli chocolates. You could put some cash in here, fold it up and stick some cash in here if you want to make a graduation type box like this. Um, it will not fit a gift card. It's not tall enough for a gift card. But again, it'll hold money, it might hold some packs of gum, um, you know, small small trinkets it should hold um you could put probably two tubes of chapstick in here if you wanted to do that so there's a couple different options of what you could put in here depending on what you have around the house i'm using the bunnies because i had a couple left over for my easter so again just a quick and easy easter decor from this past weekend or you could also use it for any other occasion that you might have and come up with real cute um, boxes. They'd be cute party favors for a, a wedding shower or a bridal um, baby shower, maybe, depending on how you decorated it. I just happen to have an abundance of Easter ones right now, even a little birthday. So there is your gift holders or your treat holders. Um, give it a try. It's a great way to use some designer pe designer series paper, especially scraps, because it's a fairly narrow width that you need and, and not a lot of height to cover these. Um, so you could use up some of that designer series paper. And you can get two of these out of an 8.5 by 11 piece of designer series paper. Because I had to go to the four and a half inches to fit the two chocolates in there correctly and have the box look nice and stay together and not pop open. Um, unfortunately, you can't get four to a sheet anymore, but I think you'll find that um, the boxes are cute enough. It's worth it to come up with some other ideas for the, the paper that you have left over. So have fun making these. If you do, please post them. I um, would love to see what you do. I think this would make a great a graduation type treat box too. Um, you could do it in school colors and um, maybe put in, I don't know if school, something related to the school in there, or maybe you can get some M&Ms and bag those up if they're in the school colors, something like that. So keep this in mind as we're hitting that season. And I'm going to repeat measurements one more time since I did struggle with those at the very beginning here. The base is four and a half by five and a half inches. On the four inch edge, you're going to score down three quarters of an inch on either side. And then on the five and a half inch side, you're going to score down at one and a half, two and a quarter, three and three quarters, and four and a half. You need two pieces of designer series paper that measures one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. And that covers this side and this side. And then you need one piece of designer series paper that measures seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And that would be this piece right here. And then one piece that measures five eighths by two and seven eighths if you wanna put something on the top. Now I'll just show you this one. I did round corners. Um, the punch I'm using is retired, so I don't like to use those in my videos, but you can see the difference between rounding and not rounding. It does make it a little fancier. And um, I think that covers all the measurements. So have fun, happy creating. Um, please post and I will see you guys all next week. Enjoy this warm weather if you're up in my part of the world. Bye-bye.